Hello everyone, I'd like to talk about the subject, novel findings of white opaque substance as an endoscopic marker of incomplete intestinal metaplasia. White opaque substance is a substance which was reported by me first in the world. When we observe gastric neoplasia of superficial elevated type, we sometimes encounter uh, there is a white opaque substance which obscures the subepithelial microvascular pattern. So, I firstly reported the morphology of the white opaque substance according to histological grade. According to our report, the morphology of white opaque substance is useful for making a diagnosis of low-grade dysplasia and high-grade dysplasia or early cancer. As shown in this slide, the morphology of white opaque substance uh, is very, very useful for the diagnosis of histological grade. So I reported this outcome in 2008. After that, I investigated the nature of white opaque substance. In this report, I showed nature of white opaque substance in gastric epithelial neoplasia as visualized by magnifying and screen with narrowband imaging in 2012. So this is a gastric carcinoma of differentiated type. When we magnified with narrowband imaging, so there is a clear demarcation line here, and inside the demarcation line, we can visualize white opaque substance, which obscures the microvascular pattern. When we investigated oil red or staining, so it clearly shows the white opaque substance is corresponding to the accumulation of microlipid droplets. As I showed in this slide, white opaque substance is closely correlated lipid droplets. So, the nature of white opaque substance is accumulated lipid microdroplets within the epithelium of gastric neoplasia. In, in the other report, uh, we reported uh, the size is 0.1 to 4 micrometers. Optically, the principles for visualization of white opaque substance is due to 1. reflection and 2. multiple scattering, so-called me scattering. The first is reflection. When we project the light onto microlipid droplets, the reflection index of lipid droplet is reported to be 1.48, which is much higher than the reflection index of mucosa cell. That can cause quite strong reflection. In addition, multiple scattering. Okay? When we project light on the multiple disorganized scattering particles, that is, lipid droplets, it can cause multiple scattering. So, the principle for visualization of white opaque substance is due to reflection and multiple scattering. So, I will summarize visualization of white opaque substance. In the normal situation, when we project blue light, it is very ab well absorbed by subepithelial capillary that can make quite distinct subepithelial capillary images. However, when the accumulation of lipid droplets is present within epithelium, when we project blue light, it can cause reflection and multiple scattering that result in the presence of white opaque substance as shown in this slide. So this is just an introduction of white opaque substance. 
From now on, I'd like to going to show novel findings for as a marker of a specific intestinal metaplasia (GIM). I'm going to show our first study. So these findings are already reported uh, in 2017, but I think this is really new finding. In background, gastric intestinal metaplasia of the stomach is associated with an increased risk of differentiated gastric cancer. While it is important to diagnose intestinal metaplasia endoscopically, it can be difficult to observe by white light endoscopy alone. In magnifying endoscopy with narrowband imaging of the stomach, a light blue crest is widely known to be useful marker in the endoscopic diagnosis of GIM. However, in testament pleasure that exhibit only white of exception without a light blue crest can also occur. So, the aim of this study was to elucidate whether the presence of white opaque substance on magnifying narrowband imaging of the stomach could serve as a marker of intestinal metaplasia in the same way that can be a light blue crest does. I'm going to show some example white opaque substance negative and light blue crest negative. This is non-magnified endoscopic view with narrowband imaging. When we magnified it, there is neither white opaque substance nor light blue crest. In histological specimen, we can't identify any intestinal metaplasia. So, I'm going to show another example. When we magnify this whitish patchy area, the distinct white opaque substance is present, but light blue crest is negative. When we observe histological specimen, it clearly shows the presence of intestinal metaplasia. Okay, and this is also another example. So when we observe uh, this resident area with narrowband imaging uh, with magnification white opaque substance is not present however light blue crest is present just at the edge of marginal crypt epithelium so when we look at histological findings it clearly shows the presence of intestinal metaplasia as well. I'm going to show the other example. So when we magnify these images, it shows the presence of white opaque substance and light blue crest. So it shows both present. So we have four kinds of uh, variations. So it also shows H staining shows intestinal metaplasia and pus staining also shows intestinal metaplasia. So this is a summary of diagnostic performance of white opaque substance and light blue crest for intestinal metaplasia. Okay. So white opaque substance alone sensitivity is not so high. That is. 50%. However, sensitivity is really high, 100%. Regarding light blue crest, sensitivity is not so high. However, sensitivity is really high, as much as 93.8%. So, the sensitivity of white opaque substance and light blue crest is not so high. Nevertheless, when we combine white opaque substance and light blue crest, sensitivity becomes increased. So this is quite unique findings. So in the summary, light blue crest and white opaque substance can be both 
useful markers for endoscopic diagnosis of intestinal metaplasia. In addition, combining both markers improves the sensitivity. So I think this is quite a unique finding for identifying intestinal metaplasia by endoscopic findings alone. So please remember it. Now I'm going to show our novel finding for the marker of gastric intestinal metaplasia uh, shown in, in study 2. So after that study, we get some quite unique finding entitled Magnified Endoscopy with Narrowband Imaging for Diagnosis of Subtype of Gastric Intestinal Metaplasia. So this is just under submission. In background, patients with incomplete gastric intestinal metaplasia have a higher risk of gastric cancer than those with complete gastric intestinal metaplasia. Japanese endoscopist Kanzaki examined the micromucosal patterns of gastric body mucosa using magnifying narrowband imaging and classified them into foveolar and group types and found that the incidence of gastric intestinal metaplasia was higher in the group type than foveolar type mucosa. This slide shows the definition of micromucosal pattern in magnified narrowband imaging. So, as shown in upper part, foveolar type was defined as a pattern in which marginal crypt epithelium with crypt opening in the center was surrounded by subepithelial capillaries. On the other hand, as shown in the lower part, group type was defined as a pattern in which subepithelial capillaries were surrounded by the marginal crypt epithelium. In the group type, continuous groove-like crypt openings divided the marginal crypt epithelium as ridged or villous structures. So, we aimed to clarify whether such micromucosal pattern of gastric intestinal metaplasia in magnifying endoscopy with narrowband imaging was useful for diagnosing of incomplete gastric intestinal metaplasia. So this slide shows protocol examination. So first we enrolled patients we observed using conventional white light imaging and then subsequently magnifying narrowband imaging uh, using magnifying narrowband imaging, we observed the lower gastric body and the gastric antrum. If light blue crests and or white opaque substance are present, we classified into group type or foveolar type. So if either type are present more than two thirds of high power field. So we took biopsy for from each part. Okay. Histological definition of complete and incomplete type in testament pleasure is according to immunohistopathological findings. That is complete type is defined positive for intestinal phenotype, but negative for gastric phenotype. On the other hand, incomplete type shows both intestinal and gastric phenotype. Okay. I'm going to show the result. We analyze 556 regions from 98 patients. I'm going to show representative cases. Uh, this slide shows 
a resin me goes a region by conventional hydrogen imaging of gastric quantum. When we magnified it, it micromucosal pattern shows groove type with light blue crest, but white opaque substance is absent. His pathological finding shows intestinal metaplasia, and immunostaining shows complete type GIM, that is, it's only positive for intestinal phenotype. The next case is resonant mucosal region at lower gastric body. When we magnified it, the micromucosal pattern shows groove type. Light progress is present, but white of X substance is absent. It shows intestinal metaplasia. Immunohistological finding shows positive only for intestinal phenotype. That means this is complete type gastric intestinal metaplasia. The next case, white tissue mucosa region is present at gastric antrum. When we magnified it, it its micromucosal pattern shows groove type and lightable crest and white opaque substance are present. His pathological finding shows intestinal metaplasia, but immunostaining shows both intestinal phenotype and gastric phenotype are present. That means this is incomplete type gastric intestinal metaplasia. The last case, a white tissue mucosa region is present at gastric antrum. Magnified endoscopic finding shows Micromucosal pattern is group type, and light of crest and white opaque substance are present. It shows intestinal metaplasia, and immunostaining shows both intestinal and gastric phenotype. That means incomplete type gastric intestinal metaplasia. So when we made statistical analysis, uh, Group type is somewhat correlated with incomplete GIM by univariate analysis. However, if we perform multivariate analysis, uh, only related finding was location, that is, antrum, and the presence of white opaque substance. So these results show univariate analysis but not multivariate analysis demonstrated a significant association between micromucosal pattern and intestinal subtype. However, the antrum and white opaque substance were independent predictors for incomplete GIM. When we investigate the diagnostic performance of white opaque substance for incomplete GIM, Sensitivity is 69.3%, specificity is 92.6%. In summary, the magnifying narrowband imaging micromucosal pattern is not useful for diagnosis of GIM subtype. However, white opaque substance is a promising endoscopic indicator for diagnosis of incomplete GIM. In conclusion, White opaque substance can be an endoscopic marker for predicting the presence of incomplete type GIM. This is a novel finding, which was firstly reported in the world. Thank you for your kind attention. See you in the real world next year.